speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Y'all no doubt have heard it said over and over again recently, as I have, that we in this country are more polarized than ever, except for maybe during the time of the Civil War. On the surface, it does seem that we are so very divided and seemingly everything is a political football. There is an, there is an us and a them for just about every conceivable issue or topic. And some of these, of course, are incredibly important issues that we're taking sides on. But the fact that we are taking sides and that we are always on the hunt for a them to blame and vilify means that Jesus' words from Matthew's Gospel for this Sunday are more resonant and relevant than ever. Because among other things, today's parable, often called the parable of the weeds, and Jesus' explanation of it shows us that there is not an us and a them. Rather, there is only an ever an us, an all of us, at least until the end of time, and sorting out things at the end of time is way beyond any of our pay grades. Matthew is a hard gospel, what with all the weeping and gnashing of teeth, but today's parable is what one commentator calls quintessential Matthew. Quintessential because this is an anxious parable and Matthew is an anxious gospel. There was anxiety among Matthew's community over the fact that the vast majority of their Jewish brothers and sisters were not following in the way of Jesus. And there is anxiety in the text for today about counterfeits, about who is true and who is false about these weeds that don't belong with the wheat. You may remember that Matthew wrote just a decade or two after the Jewish revolt against the Romans, and that as a result, the temple in Jerusalem was destroyed in the year 70. And that temple was the center of worship for all Jews and the very place God was thought to reside. And in the midst of that literal and emotional rubble, those Jews who were following in the way of Jesus fought bitterly with their Jewish brothers and sisters who rejected Jesus, and they fought about who exactly constituted the true Israel. Matthew's audience, wherever they were located, would have been cast out and cast aside by their local synagogue, and that fact did not sit well. And so this parable of weeds growing among wheat, like the parable of the sower from last week, addresses the problem of why Jesus' proclamation and his death and resurrection, for that matter, have not won over all of Israel. And so it seems here, as in other sections of Matthew, that there is clearly an us and a them, and that us and them has to do with what we Christians suppose is the central question of our existence, the person and purpose of Jesus Christ. For Matthew's community, there was the us who followed in the way of Jesus and the them who did not. There were, seemingly at least, clear insiders and outsiders. But the writer of Matthew wrestles with that question throughout his gospel account and ultimately comes down on the side of Jesus Christ, which is to say not a side at all, because there is no us and them for God. There is always and only all of us. It's telling in the parable that while it's the enemy who sows weeds in the householder's field, one of, other, one of Jesus' other references to enemies in the gospel occurs in the instruction to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. As another commentator says, if these enemies are destined for a furnace of fire, why should we love them in the here and now? And further, she says, taken together with the few other mentions in the gospel, the references to enemies resist efforts to turn enemies into nameless opponents on the other side of a great divide. Rather, they point to something more complex in which lines are blurred even as ultimate defeat is assured. In the parable, there are weeds and wheat, and the workers want those weeds that have been sown by the enemy gone. 
We all want the weeds gone. And I think we all believe we know where those weeds lie. We all believe we can clearly identify and easily uproot the weeds as the servants of the householder do. And it may or may not be important that the Greek word used for weeds describes a plant that in its early stages of growth looks a whole lot like wheat. Either way, the householder says to wait. Don't pull up the weeds yet. Wait. Why? Some answers that have been posed by others are that perhaps the servants are too hasty to judge which is which. Or maybe Jesus is teaching us that we, like the workers, are not in a position to judge that it's the householder's prerogative. Maybe the waiting is about God's grace being extended for a longer period of time. Or maybe the waiting is about giving us time to reflect on whether we are weeds or wheat. One thing is for sure, though, in attempting to pull up the weeds, the servants would no doubt damage the wheat which, with which those weeds would have been entangled. Whatever judgment looks like, it does come in our endeavoring to weed the garden in the meantime, rather than following in the way of the sower, further adds to the lie that there is an us and there is a them. There is only an ever us in the here and now and pointing fingers and placing blame over those issues we deem of highest importance even only causes us to wither and to cease to bear fruit. Joy Jennings, professor of biblical preaching at Luther Seminary up in St. Paul, Minnesota, sums up what this parable has to say to us right now in 2020 in this strange, strange moment in time really beautifully. She sums up uh, what this has to say to us now really beautifully, I think. She says, remember that before 2020, we people of God spoke of Jesus at work in the world. If you are like me, you are surprised at the results 2,000 years after the rumors of the resurrection. What exactly is God planting? I can tell you there are weeds in this garden so little evidence of the fruit of the spirit so much hatred grief discord intolerance cruelty wickedness harshness self-indulgence but then again i do not farm she says maybe you should not trust what i call weeds that seems to be what jesus is warning against there is so much extra work involved with weeding and before that determining what should be left alone because it is potentially promising and she goes on to say that the parable offers this perspective that we in the western world have difficulty with the idea of evil personified so maybe uh, our job is self-control and surrender, which is trusting the stories we told before 2020. Stories, she says, of a God who is good. Stories of a God who intrudes into our broken world to make it beautiful. The creator covenanting God whose patience for us is such that we might stop acting on God's behalf and watch for what God is truly doing to set this world right again. This chaos, all this disruption is beyond what our normal practices can fix. We want to weed the garden and the gardener is saying, wait, watch. May we this morning and always wait and watch for what God is doing in us and for us. Amen.